Hey everyone, it's me, Kirk Maston, and today we're gonna to be talking about portraits and how to edit portraits to make them really, really special. So if you know me, you know that I love to shoot portraits. If you see me at any uh, photography workshops or conventions, I'm the guy out there taking really close up portraits of people with my medium format film camera and sometimes my digital camera with like a 50 millimeter lens. That's me, I love portraits, I think they are so powerful. So today I wanna to help you make them even better and we're gonna be going through what preset and style to match to your portrait, like how to choose, and then some helpful tips on how to edit and little tips and tricks that I've learned along the way. So let's get started. I'm just gonna show you the three-step editing system that we have developed that's very special to us and it makes your life easier and it's so easy. You just gotta apply the preset, then adjust your exposure, usually lifting up the midtones a little bit higher, and then uh, adjusting white balance and tint. And that's really it, that's about it. It will get you so far, so, so far in your editing that you really won't have to worry about it too much ever again uh, just by using Mass Labs. But this video still has a lot of other information for you. It's gonna be great. And I can't wait to edit these community photos. So these are all from our community members in the Mass and Labs Facebook group. If you haven't already joined our Facebook group, please go to Facebook, search for Mass and Labs community and join us. It's a great place to learn and your image might end up in my next video. We try to use as many community videos as possible. So it's a great community and we wanna help you learn. Okay, so let's dive in. So the first thing that I consider when trying to find the right preset or film, if I'm shooting real film, for a certain subject is what mood am I going for? That's what it all comes down to. Whether you're shooting real film or using an emulation, uh, a preset made from film, you wanna match the mood of the film with the mood of the photo. And in general, any Portra pushed film or Fuji pushed film or any pushed film in general is gonna be better suited for an edgier, darker, more mysterious mood and subject matter than say other films, which are more for like a true to color look or a light and airy look. So it kind of goes in this order. If you want dark and moody, you want any of the portrait pushed films or uh, sometimes Fuji pushed films and then like Fuji every day. These are all packs that we make, but you can look inside those packs to see those films. So like Superior 400, Portra 160 pushed one or two stops, Portra 400 pushed one or two stops, Portra 800 pushed one or two stops. Those are good for moody. Anything in the middle, like if you want kind of like true to color or vibrant, you're looking for something like out of our adventure everyday pack, which is like Ektar, whoops, Ektar, Gold. Those are great and they're both real films. Check them out, Kodak Gold, Kodak Ektar, great films. Those are good for kind of in the middle. And then if you want like that super like light and floating around, like fine art, ethereal, I'm in a Tuscan villa in Italy look, you wanna go for something out of, that, that Fuji makes like Fuji 400H or Fuji 160NS uh, or sometimes Fuji 800Z. Those are for kind of the light and airy looks. So that's what I consider that spectrum when I'm choosing the look for the photo. So this photo, for example, is not super dark and moody. She's standing outside, she's got, I'd say, not an incredibly mysterious look, but more just kind of a straightforward, um, you know, neutral kind of look. And I think for this image, you could use something where you're not really like increasing the contrast a ton. So like we can, um, we can choose something like Fuji 400H, for example. And I think it'll, it'll be really nice with uh, her skin tone and the lighting situation we're in. Even though you can't really tell from this photo, there is kind of a high overcast lighting pattern here, meaning the sky is very bright even though it's overcast and it's the sun, even though hidden, is probably straight overhead and there is some kind of darkness in her eye sockets. So we don't want to increase that with a lot of contrast. Fuji 400H has like very little contrast. That plus how it treats um, kind of color palettes like this is gonna be a nice match. So we apply Fuji 400H. You can see it's just kind of a, a nice shift in uh, tone and micro contrast. The image gains kind of a three dimensional quality. Um, and now we're going to adjust exposure. The exposure looks pretty good. If I was to increase it from here, I think we would start blowing out uh, kind of her forehead and her cheekbones. Uh, however, we can do a little trick where we increase the exposure 
and use all soft, which is a tone profile. It's kind of a contrast control section that's in every pack we make. And this comes from the Fuji Frontier Scanner where we have developed all of our film looks from real film. These are tools that are for real film that we've translated into Lightroom to help you balance out contrast. And all soft is perfect. So if, you, if I hover over this, you can see it kind of knocks down those highlights, brings out a little bit of shadow detail uh, without making it look HDR. We don't, we, we're not looking for HDR. That is not a film look. That does not exist in film. Um, it's, it's not my favorite, it's my least favorite look. Um, if you like it, you like it, that's cool. That's you. I, uh, I love just the timelessness of film. And so when working with any image, you'll see that I'm very delicate with it. And that includes all soft. All right, so we did, we, we applied for Fuji 400H. We did a small uh, exposure bump. We kind of toned it all down with all soft. And now we're looking at temperature and tint. As far as temperature goes, that one's pretty easy to eyeball. I, I kind of, again, this photo was shot with a pretty nice white balance. I don't know if I would increase this at all. Maybe a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. Um, it was at 8,100, that's straight out of camera, and I would go to like, I don't know, maybe 8,500. It's not an extreme jump. It's just a small jump just to warm up her skin just a little bit. Uh, tint is another matter. Tint is very confusing for a lot of people. It's very difficult. I think a lot of people don't really even know what to do with this slider. It's weird that you're choosing between green and magenta, but that is the other major axis on color correction, uh, except for red and cyan, which does not exist in Lightroom yet. I don't know why. If there was a red and cyan slider, uh, Lightroom would be done. I mean, that would be the last thing I'd ever want, but it doesn't exist in Lightroom. It does exist in Photoshop, though. Why? Who knows? Maybe Adobe can tell me why. Um, but it should exist in here. But I digress. Tint. This is where you get good skin tone. And my kind of secret trick is don't look so much at the skin. Look at neutral areas like this street. And that is where you're going to be able to see like really, really nice um, indicators of whether the image is too green or too magenta. So looking at this street back here, I would say it's maybe a little bit magenta. So I'm going to take the tint slider and go towards green. So it's at plus three, and I think just the smallest amount towards green, like to minus three or minus two, is perfect. And that, that is that. That is a very, very simple edit. That's the basic kind of film edit that I'm trying to get to with every image, where it looks three-dimensional, true to color, timeless, uh, but also has a nice pop, a nice 3D look coming off of the screen that doesn't look fake. The last thing that I would do, and, and this would be way too tedious for this uh, episode, is I would take a, uh, a uh, cloning or a healing brush here, and I would clone out all, or heal all these little lint ball things on her. And this is where, if you see me on any kind of portrait shoot, the very first thing I do before I even start shooting is I inspect my subject really, really closely and I, ha I usually have a lint roller with me or um, even you can even take some masking tape, <clears throat> you know, like freezer tape and wrap it around your hand a bunch of times and just like pat on the person. And take, take, a, take a moment to get rid of those little dots and hairs because it will save you hours in post. Imagine me getting all of these dots off of here, right, for this one portrait. But imagine that there were 80 portraits of her in this coat that I had to do. That's like 40 hours of uh, dust removal. And it could have fixed it all just by having a little bit of masking tape with me or some way of getting those little balls of you know white off of her jacket. It's totally worth it. In fact, if I didn't have those things and I was shooting her, I would actually probably ask her to take her jacket off and we would just go from there because I, I would know that it wouldn't be worth trying to fix that later in post. Um, Maybe if you're just really young and starting out, you have the patience for that. But when you really get to be professional, you have to look for ways of conserving and protecting your time so that you make money on your shoot. Because you could be using that time for marketing or doing other things. Another thing I would do with any portrait is I would do some light uh, skin retouching. Uh, there's m like a billion ways to do this. Some people use portraiture. Um, some people use uh, Photoshop itself. You can do like... Um, Oh, what the hell is this? 
yeah, frequency separation. That's a really good one. Um, or you can just like kind of hang out in Lightroom and there's some pretty good tools here. They're not as good, but they're, they're not bad if you're a high volume shooter. Uh, you can just use a healing brush and just go through and, you know, just start healing. Uh, I would, you know, do this lightly. What I, what I normally do when I work on, see, here's like a little bit of makeup that wasn't blended in. I would, you know, try to find a skin patch that matches nicely. And what I do is I, I do all of these heels, right? I do a few of them and then I decide how much opacity I want. Sometimes you don't want to remove all of that. You just want to like kind of even it out. So it looks, you know, not so in your face. And so most of the time when I'm, when I'm healing skin or doing any kind of skin work, um, I do a little bit at a hundred percent and then I see kind of, you know, where I can back that off to where I'm just starting to notice the blemish or whatever was underneath. And to me, that's the perfect amount. We, we don't want like aliens from space, like perfectly smooth, melted skin. That is not good. But you know what I mean? Um, not that a I've never seen an alien. Maybe, maybe green aliens have like really not smooth skin. Who knows? Um, another thing you can do is you can take a brush, and you can go in and do, you know, there's a million brushes for this too, but you can do like soften skin, uh, which is just, you know, clarity, or you can even bring down texture and go over skin and kind of soften, you know, little bits. Uh, there, there is kind of an argument for and against, you know, how much uh, skin work you want to do. You know, you want to represent your subject as they are and who they are. So, you know, it's kind of disingenuous to do a lot of retouching because that's just not who that person is. Um, however, if you're like shooting for, you know, I don't know, Estee Lauder or something like, of course you're gonna do like, you probably send it to someone who just does skin and they're gonna go buck wild on it because it's not really a representation of reality. Uh, little spoiler, uh, all the beauty stuff that you all see, you know, that's not real. People aren't that perfect. We're not little porcelain dolls. Um, so I like to do a little bit of skin retouching like you just saw here. You, you can collapse this little arrow. I don't know if you know this or not. Some people don't. So you can get all of these little tools open, kind of set up a brush you want, collapse the arrow, and then you can control the strength of that entire section here. So it's at 100%. Like I said earlier, I like to do my skin retouching and then back it off. Back it off so that she is still like herself. And, and that, that is how you get natural, nice looking skin in Lightroom, which is maybe not the best place to work on skin, but it's not bad if you're trying to get through a lot of stuff. Okay, let's move on. Here is before and after, and I picked Fuji 400H because it's true to color, very low contrast and very neutral, and it fits this person. Uh, let's go for something kind of on the other end of the spectrum something more vibrant or maybe moody. Let's go for moody. Let's go for moody. Let's see here. How about this person feels pretty moody. So why moody? Uh, why, why, why do I, why do I grab this photo and I say, this is moody? Um, the kind of the literal definition of moody is mysterious. Uh, so, well, so I know there's like a ton of people who are going to be correcting me on the comments, but in general, it's a sense of mystery. So if your subject has kind of a mysterious uh, expression and they're in some kind of subdued lighting situation like this, it's kind of a good setup for a moodier portrait. And so I'm going to be looking at something, uh, some kind of pushed film to emphasize this. Why? Well, my own opinion is because you can shift the shadows ever so slightly towards like red or brown um, and also kind of crush highlights just a little bit. And that combination just looks really, really good. But, you know, you, you have to see it to believe it. So we're going to go to Portrait Pushed. And I think we'll pick one of my favorites is Portrait 160 Push 2 Stops. Uh, I'll do one stop first. So there's one stop. And then if you go two stops, if you just look at the shadows, like look at the back of the chair and like under her hair and by her leg, uh, if you go to push two stops, do you see how you get that kind of red kind of shift in the shadows? 
And I, I love that look for Dark and Moody. Uh, Portrait 160 push two stops is amazing. If you wanna go a little bit edgier, uh, Portrait 800 push two stops. See how it's just like a little bit darker. The highlights go a little bit, it, it, it's very interesting. The highlights go kind of um, blue, like slightly cool, and the midtones and shadows warm up. So you get this kind of really nice like contrast in color but I'm gonna just stick with Portrait 160. So I apply the preset, Portrait 160, it matches her mood, her expression. I'm gonna look at the exposure. If I wanna go really moody, I might bring it down just a tiny bit. And, I, and okay, here's, here's the cool thing. So in general, when you're editing a moody photo, look at the highlights and bring those down to like the, the proper exposure and you can have a really cool, like a really interesting moody photo. If you are going for light and airy, do the opposite. Look at the midtones and shadows and bring those up as high as you can. And that's how you get to that lighter and airier look. So looking at her highlights here on her arm, I was able to bring the temperature from here down to like here. And I could even go <clears throat> a little bit lower. It wouldn't be a broadcast if I didn't cough. Um, I go a little bit lower and then you can go back into the tone profile section and grab something like Shadow Soft. If you wanna just bump in just a little bit of information in the shadows and keep the overall exposure low. And that looks really good. Like look before and after, that took almost no work. It was a really nice matchup for this image. And the last thing I need to do is just adjust temperature and tint. Temperature wise, um, I kind of like the cool look. I like the coolness of this, so I'm gonna leave that. And then tint wise, I think there's some green reflecting from this pond that she's, I don't she's sitting in a chair in a pond for some reason, um, but I don't know, it works. I am going to actually add just a little bit of magenta, like to there, and that, that is that. It looks really good, super easy. The key was matching the right film look or right preset to the mood of the photo. I can't emphasize that enough. If you pick the wrong thing, it, it really can start to clash. Like if I was to choose, if I was to choose like Ektar 100, it's like our most vibrant, over the top, joyful look, um, it can get a little wild. So here is Ektar. I, I'm sure there's some people watching this going, you know what, I really like this, but, it, but I'm just gonna be straight up with you. Um, I just don't think it fits the mood correctly. You know, maybe you could try to kind of wiggle your way up in exposure and try to force this a little bit. <clears throat> but if you just look at, <clears throat> oh my gosh, shouldn't have swallowed that frog. If you just look at the photo, the moody one just kicks ass. I mean, it is that is like what's meant to be. The other one, yeah, you can get away with it. You can get away with that colorful look, but it, it, it doesn't match the vibe. So I hope that is helpful to those that are watching. All right, we're gonna do just a few more. And if you have any questions while you're watching, please ask them in the comments and I will get to them uh, straight away and otherwise this will be archived for all eternity and you can re-watch it. Okay, let's do something else entirely. So I, I, I like this photo. We don't get that many uh, portraits of men in the community, unfortunately. So if you shoot portraits of men, please post them. It is so cool. Uh, it is just really nice to see. Uh, I really like this one, it's great. I like that he's got this little skull pin. I love little little details like that so much. Uh, but when I saw this photo, I was like, what do I do with this, right? He's kind of moody. Um, I guess I could do, uh, you know, something with Portra 160. You know, that, that feels that feels kind of rock and roll. You know, maybe Portra, one, uh, Portra 800, it's nice and colorful. We don't have quite as much of a shift and warm it up. You know, I, I, I initially thought of an edit kind of like this, right? And I'm just like free flowing it through here. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, something like that. That looks, you know, it looks pretty good, right? It's not bad, but you know what I really thought of when I saw this photo was black and white. 
And that is where we can dive into the Ilford pack, which has so many options for black and white. And you can really dial it in how you want. So considering his, his vibe, like his mood, um, I think that something like really contrasty would look good. So like pan F. Yeah, that's killer. So pan F really brings out these highlights in his face. Uh, just everything looks good. It's a little bit dark on the sides and back here. So we're, we've, I've got some tricks up my sleeve to kind of dial this in. Uh, we could do all soft. Yeah. Okay. That was easy. Okay. All soft. I was, I was about to play with a bunch of them, but I don't, that worked just fine. Now th this is starting to look killer. This is like, this is like, yes, this is great. Uh, black men's portraits and, and black and white, both topics, both things should be in photography more. Um, because it's just nice to have that variety. So I, I really like this. Like uh, the texture in this photo is great. The the depth, uh, Portra or Pan F just really has nice roll off from the highlights to the shadows and a really nice grain pattern that you can see here. Okay, last thing I would do to this photo or last two things, I would see if I can make this uh, like brand or like a palm leaf behind him kind of pop out with there we go with the green filter. So these are filters like actual glass filters. If you're shooting black and white, they go on the front of your lens. Uh, there's many different colors. We, we emulate three of them. We've got a red filter, a green filter, and a yellow filter. And by modulating the color of light coming into your lens, you are affecting how the black and white film sees the world. And black and white film is actually color sensitive. I know it's really, it's really weird. It's the way that Ansel Adams made uh, Moonrise over New Mexico, where, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, I feel bad for you because it's such a great photo. Just Google it. Moonrise over, no, Moonrise over Santa Fe. It's either that or New Mexico. He makes the sky completely black using a red filter. In reality, it was daytime, the sky was blue. Very powerful stuff. So by using a green filter, I can make the foliage behind him kind of pop out and that adds that last kind of layer of depth that I want in this photo and it looks super good. I mean, okay, the other step is I could go into the paper section and either use like a, a final like kind of warm tone paper uh, for this image. So this, this is an emulation of the actual paper, warm or cool tone or neutral papers like in a dark room. So you can either do warm or you could do cool. It looks kind of like silver toned almost, or you could go back to neutral. I think for him, I think the warm tone one looks just killer. And that is a nice portrait too. I don't know, which one do you like more? Do you like the color moody one? Or do you like the just beautiful black and white one? I personally like the black and white one because I find his blue hat distracting. We have a question. Yeah, we have one All right. So Von Green asks, can, can we do a combination of different filter groups? Uh, so are you referring to the color filters or some other filters? Okay. So I'll, I'll, so Von Green, I'm going to try to answer your question here. Most of these, most of these filters in here, or most of these like tools, they replace each other. So if you were to pick all soft, which is what it's on right now, let me go back to the image. If you were, you know, it's on all soft. Now, if I was to do all hard, it replaces all the adjustments from all soft and everything is very modular. So each of these sections that are kind of blocked off with these lines, they all replace each other inside of that block. Same thing with here and the same thing with here and with here and with here, everything, everything inside of its own section cannot be stacked. So I hope that helps. They, they replace each other. Um, yeah. Thanks for asking Bon. And last thing I'm going to do is I just can't stop looking at this little thing on his hat. This is where I turn the opacity all the way up because it's not skin. And there we go. That's a killer photo. I love it. I would maybe do one more thing. I would, uh, I would burn it. It's just real basic burning, burning brush. So burning is in the dark room where you, uh, you, you used to use your hands or a piece of paper to lighten or darken certain parts of the photo. I'm going to darken right here just to kind of even it out. And I think that that looks nicer and maybe just a little bit on his chin. Look at that. They said, I, they said I couldn't dodge or burn. 
They. Whoever they are. That, that looks killer. I love this photo. And there's so much potential here, and you only really can see it with black and white. So everyone watching, get on it. Get into your black and white. Don't waste your life. There's, there's black and white's awesome. Okay, let's move on. All right, so this photo, uh, I, I wanted to pick this photo because now we're working with different skin tone, different environment completely, and a different lighting situation than the other two photos. So it's, he is kind of moody, but not like, not like sad moody, just kind of introspective. Um, I love the, I love like without even editing the photo, the, uh, the temperature contrast or the color contrast between his cardigan or his wool coat and just kind of the coolness of the city. That's really nice. I love that. Like if you're looking at a color wheel, it'd be on the opposite ends. That's good. Uh, I don't know. I call it, I call that color contrast. I don't know what else to call it, but I love that stuff. Okay. So that being considered, um, of course, of course he's going to look just awesome as hell with uh, black and white. I mean, look at that Delta 3200, but th that's not what I came here for. Um, okay. So I think something in the Fuji color every day pack would work really great for him. Um, Superior 400 in particular has a really nice kind of uh, edgy without being uh, kind of a broken up kind of look uh, as a film. It's, it's a drugstore film, like you could buy it at Walgreens or like wherever, uh, but it has a little bit of grittiness to it and emphasis on, on reds and really nice blues that really make it work for this photo. So Superior 400, I applied it. Now I'm going to um, increase the exposure just a little bit. I don't want all these midtones to just disappear like around his face. I mean, before I do that, it's hard to see the definition between his hair and his skin. So I wanna brighten it up just a little bit. Now I'm gonna work with temperature and tint. Uh, this is one of those rare photos where if this was back in the 90s, I would have shot it with like tungsten film and actually kept it cool on purpose like this. Like, I think this is a good look. In fact, I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna, before I mess with the white balance, I just wanna see what you think. Um, if I was to shoot tungsten film, it'd probably look like this straight up. But I'm gonna color correct my Superior 400 like I would normally with any other photo, and I'm gonna increase the warmth just a bit. And you can see his skin is starting to just feel more alive, a little bit warmer, and his coat is just really popping off. It looks really good. And we've got this, again, really nice contrast between these greens and blues and him. It's really great. He really like kind of pops out of the frame. Now, is the image too magenta or too green? Again, I'm gonna look at neutrals. I'm not quite sure what I'm looking at because it's so out of focus. The shallow depth of field makes it difficult, but I'm gonna say that this railing is probably fairly neutral. And if that is the case, I would say maybe it needs just a touch of magenta, just the smallest touch. I don't wanna go too far because I don't want him, his skin to go like red, but like right, yeah, right about there. I can also see it up here in the building so if I go to before and after, it kind of clears up uh, this kind of mix of, you know, tint in the, in, the, in the background building. So that's perfect. Anyway, that is where I'm going with that. Last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crop it uh, four or five. I just like that better for uh, verticals. And I, I just can't stand this little sliver of white light over here. It almost looks like a mistake, so I'm gonna crop in. And there you have it. That's a that's a cool ass photo. Uh, I like both. I like kind of the cooler look and the more like corrected, you know, color balance look. But you let me know what you like better. But this is a great photo. Yes, we have a question. So Robert Linko asks, if you switch from one preset to another, like from Ektar 100 to Portrait 400, do you need to reset the image or is that also modular? That's a really good question, Robert. Um, for the most part, you do have to reset the image. And this is because every film has its own base white balance in it. So if I was to scan Fuji 400H, like, like the film, the actual film, and put it through the frontier and do basic color adjustments uh, without like really kind of wrangling it one way or another, it's gonna come out of the scanner very cool. 
if I was to take ektar and put that in the scanner and you know do some basic basic color adjustments and it, it comes out it's going to be super warm and that is just the nature of those films and that is why you have to do in my opinion or it's not my opinion it just is you have to do the three-step workflow in that order you would apply the preset adjust exposure then adjust white balance and tint why is exposure second i put that second because sometimes people ask me well can you do the last two steps in any order yeah you could but I think by fixing the exposure, you really get a clear sense of what color issues are in the image. So if, if the image is like, you know, really dark like this, I can't feel confident adjusting white balance um, until we're at a, a much higher exposure level. So I hope that helps. That is the only part that is not modular, is that if you change uh, films, you, you, you sometimes have to adjust you know, what's happening uh, with white balance. So for example, I'm on Superior, here's Ektar, gold 200, like gold is way too cool. And that's just the way it is, but not too hard, not, not too hard to adjust. And once you start to master different looks, you can get to it like that, what you want, like from the moment you're shooting. So I hope that helps. All right, so those are some great portraits. Uh, thank you so much for joining me today. We do this all the time, every week. Every week we have another editing video and it is guided by you, the community. So whatever you want to see, just let me know. You can find us in the Facebook community. Just go to Mass and Labs, uh, or go to Facebook and then look for Mass and Labs community um, and join us. It's a great place to be. You can drop in images if you want to see how Mass and Labs looks on your photos before you purchase. Um, and if you, I mean, come and hang out. We've had people hang out there for like one or two years before they ever buy anything. It doesn't matter to us. We just want to help you learn. And it's a great supportive community without any toxic people at all. We don't allow that. So join us. If you need to reach us directly, you can also do that. Just go to m.me forward slash Mass and Labs and you can talk to us one on one and we can help you in many ways there too. So we want to see you succeed. Um, and on YouTube, be sure to hit that bell, smash ding the dinger, smash the bell, subscribe. Don't miss anything. It's really important to us and uh, YouTube is awesome. So we're gonna be putting a lot of time in there. So don't miss out, subscribe. Um, anyway, I'm coming to you from, from Ballard and uh, until next time, I hope you have a wonderful day and happy editing.